Hi, Dave. I'm super stoked to talk to you about Low Carb Houston. It's just a mere two and a half months away. And uh, I'm just so happy that you've come up with this bright idea to make the conference a lot more meaningful to the attendees. So I want you to get right into it and tell me what your plan is so that people can have an additional benefit from coming to the conference. Absolutely. Well, of course, you know, um, I'm very much a fan of blood testing. I am uh, up to around 121 draws myself. It's a bit uh, overwhelming. But hey, some people can't even get one blood draw that's comprehensive. And that, that's kind of the thing is a lot of people come to cholesterolcode.com. They come to a lot of other sites or Facebook groups. And they're like, you know, I keep hearing about these um, lab tests that not a lot of people can get, but are spoken about a lot in the low carb community. And uh, a lot of them I think are kind of important. For example, I like to look at uh, inflammation markers. I like to look at metabolic markers and so forth. And so uh, one of probably the most common ones, for example, is fasting insulin. A lot of people would like to get fasting insulin because it is, I think, probably the most uh, underrated marker of all. You know, it, just if I can insert this one thing, uh, a while ago, I want to say four or five years ago, when I saw um, Ivor Cummins uh, um, talk on cholesterol conundrum, he said if he could just measure only one marker, he'd measure insulin. And I have to agree with him, even all this time later, learning all these different tests, fasting insulin is a big deal. A lot of people, especially international uh, concert or conference goers, often can't get this themselves. So we had this idea. We had this idea that maybe we could just go ahead and have kind of like a blood testing drive at these conferences, at low-carb conferences. We've already done it once with Low Carb San Diego. It went really well. We sold out. Um, and now we're actually coming uh, to Low Carb Houston to basically do the same thing. To be sure, um, I'm kind of helping to promote and raise awareness for it. It's actually Kim Howerton who's running the entire operation, and she just does an absolutely phenomenal job. So I'm going to tell you real quick what those tests are. The tests are, uh, you've heard Ivor Cummins, for example, talk about GGT and ferritin. Those are both really good to look at. Uh, there's some common ones which are good to have alongside. Uh, which are CBC and Comprehensive Metabolic Panel. Both of those actually unpack to several other tests. So it's, I want to say, uh, like 14 for the Comprehensive Metabolic Panel for CBC. It's something like 8 to 10, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Another good inflammatory marker, and one of my favorites, is HSCRP, a high-sensitivity C-reactive protein. Uh, and another one that not a lot of people are going to know about, uh, but that I'm glad we have on board, is free fatty acids. This is actually the fatty acids that are not found inside lipoproteins, but actually found free in your blood, which have a lot to do with good things and bad, depending on uh, you know what the state of your insulin levels are. Uh, another one is glucagon. I don't know if you've seen Ben Bickman's great talk on mm -hmm. the glucagon insulin index, but that's uh, fantastic. We are, it's another thing that we hope we can get more of from the low-carb community in particular. And of course, hemoglobin A1C, just about everybody knows, is a marker for prediabetes and is another good one to be looking at. C-peptide alongside insulin is great. See, and many people like C-peptide over fasting insulin in particular. Uh, LP little a, which of course Siobhan Huggins will be doing an entire talk on in Low Carb Houston. I'm really excited about that. And then finally, the biggest and most important one, or at least uh, one that we would consider to be very relevant to us, <laughs> where we're a little biased, is mm -hmm. the NMR, Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Test, which of course breaks out all of the different lipoprotein subfractions. So it's it's cholesterol, it's a lipid panel on steroids, if you will. It's not just giving you your LDL and your HDL and your triglycerides and your total. It's also giving you these subfractions. It's giving you your total LDLP and your small LDLP and so forth. And basically all of these, because we're kind of doing this as a big group run, we can work out better pricing with LabCorp. So it's coming in at like two seven or sorry, Two hundred ninety-seven dollars. Uh, awesome. And if, yeah, if you were to comparison shop, well, you already know you order a lot of these tests. If you were to comparison shop online, it's like I mean, online you can you probably looking at around somewhere in the neighborhood of around six hundred or seven hundred dollars. So but it's, if you get these tests done at a physician, they were the insurance companies charged about two to three thousand dollars. That 
it wouldn't surprise me. And it's, it's the reason a lot of physicians don't order these tests is a lot of these tests, they don't know if the insurance will cover. And frankly, they're kind of right because a lot of these tests, the insurance won't cover. So it's usually better to try to go through a private outfit to make it happen. And uh, I, I myself, I, I sympathize with people who have a tough time getting this blood work when they want it so much. And so just, it became kind of obvious, why not go ahead and try to just do the footwork of doing a, you know, fully above board legal phlebotomy service. It's, you know, the phlebotomists are bonded and insured and we have all of the medical equipment coming. Again, all of this stuff is handled by Kim. She's, she's the rock star who makes all of this happen. But uh, like with Low Carb San Diego, we're hoping to turn around a lot of people in just two mornings, uh, which will be Thursday morning and Friday morning um, of your conference. And all they have to do is basically go to the link, schedule which time it is, um, get the tests, and then basically reserve their slot. As always, as I'm sure you know, I'm, I'm very much a fan of being fully fasted. Uh, please be water only faster for 12 to 14 hours before you have that test. And of course, for the days prior to it, try to have a normalish diet so that those labs reflect basically what your current lifestyle is. And that's it. Um, you know, a week to two weeks later, we'll have all the lab tests back. And then, you know, we basically report it back to the people. And let me just fit in just one more thing. While this is a service to the individual, it's also a service to the community. We hope, and this is where my motivation definitely comes in, we hope that you'll opt in to allow for us to collect your anonymized data to add to the data pool. So we remove your name, we remove your location or any additional um, specific identifying factors, but we get your demographic information and uh, your blood work to have for cross comparison. And that helps out the community. We don't really have a lot of strong data because this is such a new phenomenon, such a new lifestyle. And I would like for us to be able to have more data that we can provide back for further analysis and to also get a better understanding of um, what it looks like in the aggregate. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. I just wanted to add a couple of things. One is that you are being extremely kind to the physician saying that they're not ordering these tests because it's expensive. I think one major reason why physicians don't order, order these tests is because they don't understand the value of about half of these. Um, if you went and asked an average physician, what is HOMA IR, homeostatic model of uh, insulin resistance, they would have no idea what it is and they would not know a specific number as to what it means. Um, they are not so clued in in regards to inflammation markers. They are not so clued in with regards to LP little a. And when it comes to NMR uh, lipid profile, looking at particle size, particle number, this is quite foreign territory, I would say at least to about 75 to 90% of cardiologists. I'm not talking about a regular physician. <laughs> so the amount of information that you're getting from these blood tests and the ability through this conference to figure out and ferret out what a certain value means is an incredibly important information for your health. So um, I encourage people to consider this uh, use the conference as a tool to gauge your health. And I couldn't be happier that you're actually taking the step to offer this to the community. So uh, my hat's off to you uh, for doing something like this. Uh, thank you. Well, and, and vice versa. Thank you for providing the means for us to be able to make this happen. Uh, as you know, we we really want to work with conferences that can help us provide the room and help facilitate to make this, you know, work and, and function well. Uh, one other thing we're hoping to have, not absolutely certain at this case, but uh, my understanding is you have the um, conference streaming. And so what we're hoping is that for those people who are making the appointments, we'll have the main room streaming in the place where they're getting their phlebotomy appointment. That way they're not going to be missing as much of what's going on inside the conference. Uh, which I think is kind of important if we can if we can make that happen. Um, that's, we'll, we'll try our best to make that happen so that they're getting their blood draw, but the conference is being streamed in, so you're not missing any of it. I also want to offer to Kim that my office has some excellent phlebotomists. So 
these people are used to drawing blood day in and day out in my office and she could just hire them for the event instead of trying to figure out where to find a competent phlebotomist who would do a great job. So um, I will uh, remain in touch with her and see if I could offer her that service. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the only requirement we have is that they're all bonded and insured. Um, we, we want this to be as absolutely top level as possible. Um, and that's, you know, that's what we were happy with and um, doing it up to this point. It's definitely what we want to make as part of the template of this going forward. So certainly anybody who's coming to Low Carb Houston, you may want to consider this as if this has been a challenge before. Um, some people who may actually be just interested in getting their blood drawn, period, uh, may want to check into this. But either way, we're, we're excited that this is actually going to be a possibility for some, I mean, so many people who you know, who I'm sure you've met at these conferences, who have such a tough time trying to get this blood work for themselves. So in that sense, I'm kind of giddy because I feel like we have more of an answer for those people now. I couldn't agree more. Um, so I don't know if you want to elaborate a little bit about uh, one or two aspects of the blood work, uh, uh, whether you want to talk a little bit about the inflammation markers, about LP little a or anything else so that people understand the depth of the blood draw. Well, to be sure, I kind of want to keep the video not too long, but I will, def I will definitely say this, um, and I'm sure you'll agree. There are a lot of markers, certainly one of our personal favorites you and I like to talk about a lot is LDL, uh, which oftentimes have an entirely different context where inflammation is low versus where inflammation is high. Mm -hmm. And disentangling what that association really means almost always comes back to trying to find out about the root cause. That's what us engineers are always interested in, especially, right? So in the case of why it is that I like inflammatory markers in particular, certainly why Siobhan likes it, why you like it, why Ivor and David Diamond and all these people, why they like it, is because if you do have elevated inflammation, and it's not transient. It's not like you're temporarily sick, like it's chronically high. That's something to pay attention to. And you don't even know to continue to, to test until you've gotten at least one test where you can observe that these inflammatory markers are high. And I think that that's very important because inflammation is not really the bad guy. It's actually a response to the bad guy. Something that's inside your body for which there's an inflammatory response necessary, particularly if it's in a chronic fashion, it's something I think is worth addressing. It's why we, you know, have these as part of the markers uh, in the first place. A lot. And so, in in many ways, a lot of these markers, for as robust as this is, can be um, good markers for let's investigate further. And that's why I like about, for example, C-reactive protein and fasting insulin. If they're really, if they're both really low, you've already kind of cast a pretty wide net for a lot of things, both on the metabolic disease state and on the immune response disease state really well. And in, in that sense, that's why I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, super excited that you're gonna put this video on and I happen to record it also. So I'm gonna to try to get this on onto uh, my YouTube channels and see if we can disseminate this information. Great, fantastic. Thank you so much.